Chapter 2, Fleur and Mary Don't make us come up there and fetch you, Aunt Fleur called. Dawn grimaged at the irritating chirp of their voices. It cut through the house like a bird's song, the kind that wakes you at the t crack of dawn. Coming, Dawn called back, forcing the annoyance from her voice. It was her first day of sixth grade at her new school, and she was already dreading it. Back home, she'd love her old public school for one reason. Her friends were there. Ronnie and Daniela were the reason she had bounced out of bed every day, excited to meet up at the station right outside their apartment buildings. What was more terrifying than starting over at a brand new school where you don't didn't know anybody in a brand new town? And worse, it was middle school. That was even more n nervous. That made her even more nervous. Dawn had no idea what to expect. Her aunts had registered her before she arrived in town, so she hadn't visited Castletown Middle School yet. But she had to go to school, of course, and she had to be on time. She couldn't afford to be Mark Tardy. This was her last chance to prove to her parents that she wasn't trouble and causing problems anymore so that she could go back home. You can do this, she promised herself as she dragged her tired body out of bed and opened the wardrobe. The doors made the worst screeching noise. Break. She plugged her ears and shuddered in annoyance. If her aunt's high-pitched voices hadn't already jerked her fully awake, the wardrobe made sure of it. No more sleeping beauty, she thought, as she selected her outfit, pulling it out of the drawers, which smelled like mildew and mothballs. She slid into her clothes, then shut the wardrobe, releasing another ear-splitting creak and glanced in the mirrors on the doors. He, her warped reflection stared back at her. She wore a tight-ribbed pink top and ripped jeans, the fashion-able kind, the fashionable kind. But now she felt unsure. Dawn looked down at herself. She felt insecurity rush through her, just like her old life. Suddenly, her old clothes felt all wrong here. Would she fit in? Would the other kids like her? Uncertainty stabbed her like a rose's thorn, but she wasn't about to borrow a frumpy old dress from her aunts, right? She shuddered at the thought of showing up to her first day at her new school in one of their ugly blue or red fashion monstrosities. Their dresses were probably secondhand too like everything else. Anyway, she was already running late. She didn't have time to change. Dawn snapped a quick mirror selfie, found that one spot in the corner where she could snag a weak Wi-Fi signal, and shot a text to her friends, asking how she looked in her outfit, and promising to FaceTime them right after school. But it took forever for the transmission to go through. Come on, Dawn begged her phone, watching the text struggle to send. Please, I need this. Just send already. Finally, her phone chimed. She waited. Dots flashed. Then her friend's replies flooded the screen. Ronnie, you look so rad. Show them country mice how it's done. Daniela, ooh, love the pink top. Good luck today. Make loads of new friends. Ronnie, but not too many. Don't forget your city girls. That made Dawn smile in spite of herself. Her mood instantly improved. She texted them back a slew of pink hearts emojis that filled the whole screen. She could never replace them. They were her best friends, and they always would be. Period. In fact, her whole plan was to be on her best behavior so she could get back home as soon as possible. Nothing was going to stop her. But then, another thought occurred to her. She needed to make new friends ASAP. Plus, she decided as she hatched her new plan, 
if she made friends with nice kids, in short, the kind her parents would approve of, the kind who would never ever shoplift, maybe she could convince her mom and dad that she had changed her ways and could go home earlier. With that hopeful thought, Dawn snagged her backpack and made her way down the creaky staircase, hoping that she didn't get a splinter from the worn floorboards. When she reached the living room, she glanced through the window on the front door. The sun had risen a little more and drenched the outside surroundings in golden light. Beyond their stone cottage was a lay Beyond their stone cottage lay a thick forest that stretched up to the foothills of a forbidding looking mountain range. It towered over everything in town, with its sharp snow covered peaks poking at the sky and crowned by rings of misty clouds. The view reminded Dawn of something out of an old fairy tale, something ancient and filled with dangerous magic. Most people would have called it beautiful, or charming even, but it only made Dawn feel sad. She didn't know you could miss buildings, but she did. Dawn dragged her gaze away from the mountains, then hurried into the kitchen, which smelled of eggs and bacon and something else. Something sweet, perfumey, and a chew. She sneezed violently. Through the open windows, the rose garden maze released its sickly sweet aroma, which wafted inside the cottage, triggering Dawn's allergies. Oh, my heavens, Aunt Fleur said in alarm, stepping back from the wood-fired stove. She wore an old-fashioned red dress, as always, with a red cape. Her gray hair was tucked into a top bun. Dearie, how about a spot of tea? Aunt Mary added putting an old tea kettle to boil on the cast-iron burner. It'll clear you right up. Aunt Mary was shorter and younger than Fleur. She wore a blue dress and cape. Unlike her wife's, Mary's hair was jet black but pulled back in the same style. She even had on a blue cap that matched her dress. They talked with slow, slow thick southern drawls that made it hard for Dawn to understand sometimes. Unlike back in the city, where everyone spoke a million miles a minute, like they were in a rush to get somewhere, probably because they were. Uh, thanks, Dawn said, sniffling a sniffle. That sounds great. She took a seat at the kitchen table where her aunts bustled around making tea and cooking eggs and bacon, sizzling in fat she'd learned was called lard. The kitchen was terribly old-fashioned, like everything else in the house. There wasn't even a microwave or a coffee maker in sight. The freezer was separate was separate from the fridge. It was the kind that opened like a treasure chest. None of the furniture matched either. The worn wooden kitchen table sported six different sorts of chairs, all with various colored seat cushions. Dawn guessed that most of this junk came from their antique shop. She missed her old apartment and its modern furniture. It might have been made of flimsy particle board and purchased from Ikea, but at least it was new and didn't smell funny. Her parents had assembled it all, struggling with the instructions, which looked more like some kind of super difficult math test. Oh dearie, here you go, Mary said, pouring pipping hot liquid from a chipped porcelain teapot painted with roses and dragons into an equally battered teacup. She set it on a saucer in front of Dawn, who eyed the steaming liquid with great suspicion. The tea looked brown and murky, and it smelled strong and med medicinal. A few leaves were floating in it, too, but she forced herself to take one sip, then almost spit it out. W what is it? She coughed. It tasted awful, like cough syrup. Oh, silly, Mary makes it from the herbs in the garden, Aunt Fleur chimed in from the kitchen. Pluck up and drink up, it's good for you. Dawn's eyes flicked to Aunt Fleur and Aunt Mary, who were busily stoking the fire in the stove and mixing up strange, almost witchy co concoctions from herbs and plants from their garden. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a rush of homesickness hit Dawn so hard 
that it felt like the wind was knocked out of her. In that moment, in this strange kitchen, in this weird place, she missed her parents terribly. They drank rich, dark coffee spiked with thick cream and brown sugar, not disgusting bitter tea, and they made it in a shiny new coffee maker that burbled. In fact, they were probably sitting in the kitchen right now, doing just that, without her. Anger and love simmered in her heart sim simultaneously. She missed her parents like crazy, but they were the, also the ones who sent her to the middle of nowhere. It was a confusing mixture of emotions, kind of like a rose, which was both beautiful and dangerous, as her aunt had explained, with sharp thorns lurking just underneath the delicate petals and sweet perfume. Dawn pushed the tea away. Her appetite had vanished. Her stomach churned unhappily with the bitter liquid she had swallowed. This was just one more thing in a long list of things that bothered her. Oh, Mama and Papa, I miss you, Dawn thought. Her aunt's voices snapped her out of her thoughts. Oh, look at the time, Mary chirped in alarm, gesturing to the antique clock ticking away above the sink. We've got to hurry. Goodness gracious, you're going to be late for school, Fleur added with a flutter. They hustled Dawn to the door. How mortifying, Dawn thought as she slugged her backpack over her shoulders and clomped toward the lonely-looking mailbox at the end of the drive, where she had to wait for the bus. Back in the city, riding the school bus was decidedly uncool. Obvious, oblivious to her torment, her aunts called, cheerful, called cheerfully to her. See you after school, Mary chirped, waving from the front door. We'll pick you up to take you to the shop. We've got a bunch of chores waiting for you. We had to let our sales assistant go last month, Fleur chimed in. So we really need your help. You're going to be a lifesaver. They peered at their niece, expectantly. Their arms fluttered above, above about almost like fairy wings. As if this day could get any worse, Dawn thought in frustration. She pictured the quaint storefront in the center of town with the golden awning that read Spindles and Things. If you asked Dawn, the, the antique shop was dusty, gross, and filled with a bunch of smelly old junk that made her crinkle her nose in disgust. She didn't understand why anyone would want any of that broken. Used stuff when they could shop for brand new furniture. But when she complained about it to her parents, they argued that working for her aunts would teach her responsibility and work ethic, whatever that meant. Also, it turned out this was part of the deal that they'd made with, their, with her aunts for taking her into their home. For the past year, their shop had been struggling to stay afloat. Dawn forced a smile, even though this was the last way she wanted to spend her afternoon. She wanted to text or FaceTime her friends or simply sulk in her bedroom. But she had to be on her best behavior if she wanted her exile to end quickly. Of course, can't wait, Dawn mumbled through stiff, pressed lips. See you after school. Have a good day, her aunts called as the yellow bus roared down the gravel road, coughing out black exhaust. But Dawn knew the truth. Unless they could do magic and miraculously teleport her back to the city and her friends and her parents and her school and her old life, then there was no way this was going to be a good day. Ugh, make it end already.